In six years' time, this is going to be the principal venue for the greatest show on earth. The 2022 FIFA World Cup. Architecturally, it'll be stunning and state-of-the-art. It's the refurbished Khalifa International Stadium in the Aspire Zone, part of the Doha Sports City Complex in Qatar. But there's an ugly side to the beautiful game. The story of the men who are building the stadia where the football tournament will be played and those landscaping the areas around them. So what we're dealing with here is workers facing the most appalling conditions, some of them facing forced labour. Sometimes I feel like I'm in prison. Do you really want to be watching the, F the Football World Cup in 2022? thinking about workers who face abuse building the stadium where the world's top talent in football are playing. Each time I get my salary, I'm thankful to heavens because I never know, not just when, but whether I will be paid again. In 2014, Amnesty highlighted a range of labour abuses in Qatar. People who were paying uh, exorbitant recruitment fees, being misled about the work on offer to them, living in appallingly dirty accommodation. Uh, having their pay delayed and also forced labour. So there are six people living in this really small room um, and this is where they cook their food and this is where they sleep or so they have common toilets at the back and he's just saying that it's in pretty bad shape. This workers' uh, welfare issue has come about long before we were awarded the hosting rights. Before answering to international media and before answering to international organizations, we owe it to ourselves to hold ourselves accountable for what kind of country we'd like to live in. With the Qataris feeling very sensitive to the criticism of their treatment of migrant workers, drastic reform was promised that year. I've been in Qatar as recently as February 2016, and yet we see the same problems there as before. Fundamentally, the situation has not changed. This Gulf state has the third largest natural gas and oil reserves in the world and also its richest population. But when it comes to construction, it has to recruit workers from abroad and they come from some of the world's poorest nations Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan. At the heart of the problem is an employment sponsorship scheme known as Kafala. Amnesty does not oppose kafal itself, but our concern with it is that it requires a worker to have a sponsor, a sponsor who is a Qatari, who will give them permission to work in Qatar and also when they can leave the country and whether they can change employer. Now this might seem innocuous, but what it basically means is that workers cannot literally change their job if they're not happy there, can't leave the country if there's some sort of a situation without their sponsor's permission. It creates an incredible power imbalance between employers and workers. So when workers are not happy about their conditions, employers know that they can hold them back, that they can prevent them from finding other jobs, or they can hold that against them and say, well, I will not, will not release you if you complain to the authorities uh, about your situation. As a result of the universal condemnation of Qatar, following revelations by Amnesty International and others, over its disgraceful treatment of migrant workers, those overseeing the construction work on the World Cup sites were forced to act. The Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy produced a set of workers' welfare standards which were implemented in February 2014. We have developed our workers' charter that is already available, available to the public. The workers' charter uh, builds upon what is available under Qatari labor law and is available right now for everybody to see, and it is our commitment towards workers' standards. The standards run to more than 100 pages and set out in detail the requirements for ethical recruitment and employment, binding contracts, how and when workers will be paid, holiday entitlement, repatriation expenses, health care 
and most visible, the state of accommodation. As all of us know, lots of things look very good on paper. It's in the practice that we need to see changes made. Since the introduction of the welfare standards, we've documented a range of labour abuse in, on a World Cup site. You can now be jailed for taking photographs or filming in a workers' camp. But Amnesty spoke to 234 migrant workers on the Aspire Zone and the Khalifa Stadium World Cup sites. All of them employed since the introduction of the welfare standards. None would appear on camera, so we voiced their testimony using actors. All 234 said that they'd been deceived on at least one aspect of their employment terms. Either the salary they'd be paid, the hours they'd have to work, or the type of job offered. I am an electrician and I agreed to electrician work. But when I came to Qatar, they gave me only electrician work for first two months. After that, they said I had to do iron fitting work. I felt I had no choice because there was no choice. I can't leave Qatar or change jobs. Problem is that we have people who have often struggled to find work back home from very humble backgrounds, often illiterate, uh, in a very disempowered position. When they end up in places like Qatar, in fact, not only are they already debt ridden, it turns out the job on offer is actually for much less pay, might even be much different conditions to what they agreed to. And they're stuck there. They can't leave. They can't even change jobs in that country. They're stuck in a cycle of abuse. All 234 had had their passports confiscated by their employers or their agents in breach of Qatari law and the Supreme Committee's workers' welfare standards. My boss said, work for another one, two, three months and accept whatever you get. If you don't work for 700 reals, you won't get paid and you won't get your passport back. They might as well have taken their identity because in Qatar and many other countries in the region, a worker who is caught without any kind of identity documents is considered an absconded worker. That's a criminal offence in Qatar. You can be put in jail. More than half, 132, faced chronic delays in receiving their pay. In some cases, many months beyond the monthly due date. All I want is my salary, like he promised, and on time. The salary is $200 per month. It is not enough to cover my, my living expenses, my debt for the recruiter fee, and to send money home for my family. Now, when you remember these are workers who have paid thousands of dollars often to recruiters back home to come in, have taken loans to pay for that under you know, enormous debt clouds, when that pay, which is low, is delayed, it basically puts these people in an incredibly terrible situation. And many of those men claim they hadn't been provided with valid residence permits. It's their lifeline. It's what allows them to get access to medical care, other services, and without it, they can be arrested by the police at any moment as absconded workers. Migrant workers cannot themselves get residence permits because they need their employer to do it for them. Under the welfare standards, there's also a comprehensive grievance procedure for any worker to lodge a complaint, but they are reluctant to use it. I don't make any com complaint. I am scared. They will take. They will. They'll cancel my visa. If I lose this job, they will throw me out of the country. But I will still have a huge debt to pay. If I complain, I'm worried the manager will send me back to my country without any money. To their credit, the Supreme Committee has acknowledged that there is a problem. They're keen to talk to us about what can be done to address these things. The Qatari government says it's working with all its contractors to implement and enforce the workers' standards. And over time, conditions for migrant workers will improve. But what of the organisation responsible for the World Cup, the governing body of global football? The winner to organise the 2022 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. <laughs> FIFA has not done enough to address this situation from the very beginning. It should have known, even before it awarded the World Cup to Qatar, 
that this is an environment where labor abuse is endemic. In its bidding process, it made no mention of human rights, let alone labor rights. Where the torch of amnesty has shone on this particular site, we have seen this labor abuse. But what about the other seven World Cup stadiums that are to be built, where we are not working? FIFA is the key to all of this. It is the key partner to resolve the abuse as well because its impact is well beyond football. It is the one that brings the World Cup to places like Qatar, the most high profile sporting event in the world, even bigger than the Olympics. FIFA has not only a responsibility under international human rights standards, but a moral responsibility given its influence globally.